This is something you've got to see. One of our rabbits really likes to move around in his cage and hop around and cause a ruckus at night. Look at what he's gotten himself into now. What's the matter, little bunny? Are you having a good day up there? Yesterday, I was out here with the chipper shredder. We got it back from the, uh, the good folks at Aaron's Honest Engine, my go-to guy for small engine repair. And you can kind of see right where the chipper shredder was as I sp sprayed out all the material. This was the, the largest pile of branches. It's pretty deep right here, so we can probably spread a lot of this stuff around. Over here, I've staged another nice big pile of branches, ready to be chipped and shredded, so we can have more of the bark mulch on this side of the goat pen. As we move into the warmer spring months, it's kind of nice to be on Baby Bunny Watch again. There's still an overwhelming amount of storm damage cleanup to take care of, but Baby Bunnies will be a welcome distraction. There are three rabbits that are pregnant. We've got Autumn, and over here, Daisy, and marigold. All three have already started putting hay and fur into their nest boxes, so it probably won't be very long before we do have the baby bunnies. It's okay. You might be wondering why we have our baby goats back inside. We've decided to start milking Valkyrie for ourselves, so in order for there to be enough milk for us, we have to separate the kids from the mom so that the goats don't drink all of the milk. Originally, we were gonna keep the baby goats in this playpen, but out in the storage section of our goat shed. Well, that's damaged now, open to the elements and not safe for the goats. So, so they're inside now. The plan is to keep the baby goats inside at night and then reunite them with Valkyrie during the day. We only kept those goats inside for about a week. After that, they were locked in their little goat shelter stall away from Valkyrie. We probably didn't need to keep them indoors at all. It's just been a hard year for Wendy, and she wanted them close by to keep a good eye on them. We will continue to let the little goats nurse part-time for quite a while. If another one of our goats is pregnant, it will be nice to be able to coordinate the nursing times and the separation pins. Plus, if Wendy needs to stop milking for a while, we can keep Valkyrie in milk by letting the little goats nurse full-time as needed. 
Let's see if I can fix it for him. This little pedestal setup is kind of temporary. I'm not sure if we're going to be eating him in a little while. But we just didn't have enough room to keep him with the other bunnies because he was uh, he was not getting along with them. I do want to try this one first. Make sure it will fit in the cage. Hi, sweetheart. Are you curious what's going on? boxes in and then I'll give them a little hay every day and see if if they start putting it in their mouth so that it sticks out on the sides then I know I need to give them a whole bunch of hay and straw and stuff but otherwise they'll just eat it so I'll just give them enough so that I can kind of do my my test because even it even if they do go in there and have their babies, I'm going to notice it right away, so they'll be fine. Because <laughs> it's got enough pine shavings and they'll put their fur in there and stuff, so it'll be okay for a couple hours. Because usually I hear in the middle of the night that there's this loud commotion and all the rabbits are thumping and stuff like that, so <laughs> it, it wakes me up. They give me nightmares, these rabbits, because they're always making crazy noises in the middle of the night that wake me up, so. Okay, next rabbit. Let's give Daisy that box, because I think this was her box, so. Is this the one? Yeah. Yeah, that's your box. That's your box, so you can stop playing with this blue thing. The reason I'm putting them in today, even though it's a little early, is that uh, they have these pads in here, and I can tell the girls will start remodeling their houses. <laughs> Particularly Daisy likes to get a jump on things. Usually Marigold just acts like she's going to do something. Hey, be nice, be nice. She doesn't like me remodeling the house for her. <laughs> She's very nasty. <laughs> she likes to do her own nesting. Thank you very much. <laughs> Daisy is a nesty girl. Brian, this is wrong. See, she's got to go in there and inspect it right away. Yeah, and... she's a good mom. She's one of the best. Yeah, she's she's definitely a goose. Oh, because she's like, it's too early. Okay, get out of here now. <laughs> Why is this here? I need to. I like sitting on it, though. She's so funny. She does like sitting on the top of her nest boxes. I always have to really scrub the tops of the nest boxes that Daisy's been in because 
she will just sit there and poop on the top. So annoying. And she may actually be the most frustrating one to give one early to because sometimes she'll just kick all the stuff out. And so I have to keep putting it in because she just does this over and over and jumps in, jumps out, jumps in, jumps out, and she's scratching at it, and she's just funny. And then we have Marigold. And then we have a good job making these new nest boxes for us. So we've got two new ones that are nice big size. The first one we made, we kind of made it a little too small. So these are nice and big, especially for this big girl. Because she needs a big box, doesn't she? And that might have been why we've had a few problems with Marigold not wanting to put her kits into the nest box. And so I'm thinking that, that this will be a lot better. Because you can see with Daisy, she's very comfortable in these this size. And Marigold's is even a little bit bigger than that. She's a nice big bunny. So They're both curious about the boxes, so that's mm -hmm. good. Yeah. I didn't shoot any video of making these new nest boxes. If you want to see how I did it, there's another video all about it. I'll uh, put a link. Daisy's always the one who's like inside it right away. Nest box? Am I pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> She's just silly. <laughs> You're just observing Autumn because I I haven't really gotten to see her do her thing yet, so Probably wait until she's ready. Yeah. Want to say what's happening? Autumn's nesting. That's for her nest, but. A mix of what? Just some of the hay and straw. up her nose. <laughs> Is that good, Marigold? Do you like green grass? Should we give you that every day? <laughs> Is it the best thing you've ever had? Are you even chewing or are you just swallowing it? <laughs> Good grief, chubby bunny. Most bunnies will eat like two or three blades of grass at a time. <laughs> Not marigold. She's a shove it all in kind of girl, kind of rabbit. Yep. Like this piece is nice and big. <laughs> all right, it's the next morning of bunny watch, and Daisy is pulling her fur out quite a bit getting ready to have her babies.
Marigold and Autumn had their babies last night. We don't want to disturb them. They're in the nest box. But later today, we'll probably get them out to count them. Good job, Marigold. Yeah. How you doing, Autumn? I don't know if you can see all of that fur in the nest box. They really, uh, they really make, like it nice and warm and fluffy for the babies. Daisy just had her bunnies. We're not going to disturb them either. We'll wait a little while and do the count with the other ones. But I'll give you a little bit of a look. You can kind of see the fur in there moving around a little. Good job, Daisy. All right, so before we count them, how many do you think we're gonna have per bunny? I don't know. What are you hoping for? A couple. I'd like to have three bunnies each. Then we'd like to have more than three bunnies each. <laughs> okay, Marigold. It's okay. I need to put some rubber gloves on for hers because she always leaves her icky for me to clean up. It's okay, baby. I'm not getting rid of your babies. <laughs> She's always very anxious. Oh, big wiggly pile. Look at that. More than three. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. One. Two. Three. Goodness sake. They're so wiggly. Four. Six, seven. That's a tiny one. Yeah. Eight, nine. Good gracious. Nine bunnies for Marigold. <laughs> Hi, pretty girl. You did good. You had all the extra fat to have babies. <laughs> Just look how much skinnier she's looking now. Okay, lots of fuzz. So much fuzz. Good job. Good job, Mama. You have to be really careful with the edges of your cages to make sure that you don't have any baby bunnies that latch on to the mama 
to nurse and then come out of the box with her and then get stuck behind something because that's happened to us in the past where I've had the box over in the corner and she gets out of it and then they fall into that crack. So now I'm really careful to watch those edges. Hi, Daisy girl. Maybe we'll do her last. She, she just had her, so. <laughs> so Autumn is Daisy's baby, our white rabbit. And Daisy always pulls a, just a massive amount of fur out. And I believe Autumn definitely takes it after her because you can you can actually see her teats really well and stuff and they're just fur everywhere. See, there's enormous quantities of spare fur here, which is good because that helps to keep the babies warm. knit a rug with this. <laughs> There's your three bunnies, Brian. Just three for Autumn. Let's take a close-up of one of the little, bu little buggers. Oh, they're pretty active. Yeah. Three active ones. One of Marigold's was pretty small. This one's gonna look like maybe gonna be a brown one. You never can get your hopes up too much when they're really small. Those can be a little bit more uh, prone to not making it. I like these cages better than my homemade ones because I can get this nest box right square up against the walls so there's no, no chance of anybody escaping those ones unless she moves the box and then I can check behind it and stuff anyway. So. Rabbit. <laughs> Wendy did just put these together from a kit and they're working great for us. Just to show you the difference between this and our first cages, I'll show you what those look like. So so these cages are a little larger but they're a little more wobbly, not quite as tight and square as, as the newer cages are. We would like to have cages that had a little more height to them and had the wire cages that were uh, a thicker gauge. We'll see how these new cages work. All right, let's see how Daisy's doing. She can be kind of aggressive, so I need to calm her down a little. It's okay. She gets really grumpy. She's very nice and sweet right before she gives birth, but then right after she's like, ah! <laughs> she's kind of a, a scary mom. You gotta be careful. She has such big babies all the time. Let's see. That one. Come on, Look at one. that. This is so cute. Well, it will be cute. <laughs> Two. Two. Nice fat babies. Hey, Brian. 
Brian wished for three, and then they all had three. Did you go out here and count these earlier? No. Three. All right. Just three babies for Daisy. Daisy has had smaller litters like this the last couple of times. How many did Marigold have? Nine. Okay, so we have... 15. 15. That's a, that's a good number.